guys, Lunarspell27 here, bringing you my live reaction and review on Bleach Chapter 640. Baby, hold your hand, three, mad lullaby number seven. Okay. So it's been 14 years since Bleach has been serialized on Weekly Shonen Jump, so happy 14th anniversary, Bleach! It's even featured on the cover of Weekly Shonen Jump magazine, which has been a very long time since Bleach had its own cover on Weekly Shonen Jump, so yeah. And it also features Ichigo and Uryu, also making me wonder when the hell are we going to get an actual fight between them? You know, an actual confrontation instead of, you know, yelling out, WHAT THE HELL ARE YOU DOING, Uryu? I'm still waiting on that. Do you remember the name you called me by when I first awoke? I am... I really loved that name. Oh, flashback. Uh, looks like a... A kid? A, a face? Baby? I'm not exactly sure, but... Uh, oh, there's um, a white hand. So you finally awoken from your slumber. Good morning. The name given is... What? Is this uh, Pernita's flashback? And so this week's chapter of Bleach has a color page of all the storm creatures from A to Z. You know, if you think about it, most of these storm creatures are actually pointless. I mean, they're irrelevant. But some of them are actually pretty neat. Robert Accutron, which we still don't know what the hell N stands for. BG9, a freaking cyborg, which we still don't know what the hell is up with him. Or it. And we don't even know what the K stood for. Stern Reacher W, which I forgot his name, sorry. He was kind of pointless at the end. Hey, there's Kurjay Opie. Remember Kurjay? I mean, there's freaking Mass the Masculine. <laughs> and I know a lot of people hate this guy, but... Hey, aside from Basby, he made a lot of progress, I'm just saying. And fucking Gremmy. The whole brain in the jar thing was so stupid. Hey, Mayuri, he is laughing maniacally, acting like he's one. Ashi Sogi Jizo faces off against their great opponent and devours him whole, which obviously is not gonna work. Any issues with your digestive organ, Ashi Sogi Jizo? You did swallow him whole, so it's only natural the process won't be immediate. But that final bit of information allowed me to make the right decision in having you born without any teeth. It's a baby. It's not supposed to have teeth yet. Had you decided to masticate him, he would have multiplied inside your stomach and given you a whole new meaning of the term gastric pain. Okay, so if he was given teeth and chewed uh, Pernita, the, re the left arm of the Soul King, it would have multiplied and tried to burst out of Ashisogi Jizo. And I guess it's gonna happen now because uh, there's something uh, looks like it's trying to like come out of the head. Okay. Um, is okay. So I guess Pernita did multiply and is trying to burst out of Ashisogi Jizo. Oh. Oh no! The head exploded. I feel so sorry for the Zonpongcho spirit. I so feel sorry for him. Mayori is awful. Actually, no, he's always been awful, but he does a lot of cool stuff, I'm not gonna lie. Creepy stuff too, though, but he's still an awful Shinigami. An arrow, oh. This is heading towards Mayori, but he dodges. Did Pernita use bow and arrows? <laughs> it did! <laughs> And it's got like a, like a bow and arrow, a like fail or something. I guess that explains how he got out of Ashiso Jizo. So I guess Mayuri forgot that the left arm of the Soul King can still use his Quincy powers. Damn it, Mayuri. And Mayuri's got this, what looks like an annoyed look on his face or a smug look, I'm not sure. Well, well, I didn't forget a thing. But for the Spirit King's left arm to address itself as a Quincy, I just never expected to hear such a shameless declaration spewing forth from you. Okay, so maybe it's because he thought that he was the left arm of the Soul King, he never believed that he would use Quincy powers. But, yeah, Mayori, if you had that piece of information before, you could have, like, made the inside of Ashisogi Jizo a lot tougher, or maybe of absorb Reishi or something, so... But Pernita wouldn't use the high fail to escape. So the left arm is able to regrow his fingers. And, you know, actually, something I forgot to mention here. Um, Pernita's talking has uh, improved greatly. I mean, he, or it, is now able to speak in full sentences now. 
I guess it's because the left arm, I mean, is supposed to represent uh, progress, so that probably explains it, or something, not sure. Why calling myself a Quincy is something that is shameless. I am always, from the very beginning, Quincy. Okay, yeah, yeah, Pernita is definitely possessing the left arm of the Soul King or something. It's gotta be it. What was that just now? For a moment, his entire manner of speech changed drastically. Indeed, his vocabulary and his own body, for that matter, have in small increments been increasing since the beginning of this battle. Could it be that he is slowly regaining his memories as the Spirit King? Or could it be, through some unknown variable, he's beginning to evolve? I'm gonna go with the latter because if it was because Pernita was regaining the memories of the Soul King, then Pernita would have remembered that it is the Soul King. Part of the Soul King, not a Quincy. So, yeah, there's some unknown variable. And I said it before, I think uh, Pernita, the real Pernita, is possessing the left arm of the Soul King. Don't know how the hell he or she got his hands or her hands on the left arm. That still needs to be explained. A bunch of bow and arrows, like, formed on each fingertip. It just looks so weird seeing a hand doing that. <laughs> So, uh, Pernita shoots a bunch of arrows, which, uh, Mayuri is able to dodge, but, oh, okay. There are nerves attached to the arrows, so you can't touch the arrows, otherwise you'll get close to the nerves. And you have to get away from the arrows, otherwise the nerves that are coming out from the arrows will get to the body. So he has to, like, put himself a great distance from the arrows. But um, some of the nerves look like are heading towards uh, Mayuri's arm. Uh, if he presses something on his arm and explodes, and there goes his arm. Must be that exploding armor that he still has. Or uh, exploding mechanism or something. Eh, it's Mayuri, he can just regrow it back or something. So Pernita is still able to control the nerves on the ground, and um, Pernita is using the nerves to change the direction on the arrow, it was heading to the ground, but now uh, the nerves are um, changing the direction back towards Mayuri. Yeah, it looks like Mayuri's gonna get stabbed by the arrow and there's no avoiding it, so what's gonna happen now? Oh, Nemu! Okay, I guess Nemu's going to step in now. <laughs> she grabbed onto the arrow but had to cut off her own arm. That's the second time in a row that we're getting arms cut off. Like. That's the third character in this fight, actually. I mean, don't forget Kampachi. But now Nemu is heading towards the nerves on the ground, so is she gonna be okay? Oh, okay. Uh, Mayuri grabs onto Nemu's head and gets her uh, away from the nerves. Okay, he's saving her. That's. I was gonna say that's nice, but he just slams her onto the wall. Like. That's another thing I don't like about Mayuri how he treats his artificial daughter. He's a dick. What are you doing acting on your own accord without orders? If you would have remained on the floor a second longer, you would have been reduced to a ball of meat. I decided that you required a shield for this fight. Oh, she's acting on her own accord, not on Mayuri's orders, okay. Looks like she's starting to get like her own sense of thoughts and opinions, I guess. I don't remember ever teaching you that it was okay to assist me based on your own personal reasoning and judgment. Correct, you have never taught me that. I was very specific about you not picking up on things I haven't directly instructed you on myself. I do not know. Oh, is she rebelling against her father? I mean, Mayuri doesn't like the fact that she's acting on her own. Nemu. Rather, Nemuri Nanago? Is that Nemu's real name? Her full name? Huh. Oh, we translation note. Sleeping number seven. Well, Nana means seven in Japanese. So sleeping number seven, so she's the seventh Nemu or something? Through the great many battles we've been through, ever since Kurosaki Ichigo's group has shown up, it appears that I may have taught you a little too much. I'm sure you realize how much of a burden it would be for me to raise the next you up in the same way as the current you. Okay, yeah, so there are more than one Nemus. Well, there were before. Okay. Actually, no, that's not much of a surprise, really. I mean... We know that Nemu was artificially created by Mayuri, so there being other Nemus before the this Nemu actually makes some sense. Not surprising, but it's 
need to know. I do not know. If you don't know, then refrain from acting on your own intuition and instincts. You do not have the freedom to sacrifice your life as you see fit. Your life will only end when and where I deem appropriate. Now that I've cleared that up, rise. Yes, sir. I have seen the error of my ways, Mayuri Sama. The secret has finally been revealed. What secret? Is that the end of the... Yeah, that's the end of the chapter, okay. Alright, so yeah, that was Bleach Chapter 640. What did I think? Well, I actually thought this was a good chapter. The action was pretty good so far. I mean, it was obvious that Pernita was going to escape Ashisogi Jizo in some way. I mean, this is the second time Ashisogi Jizo tried to consume his enemy and it never worked. But then again, why didn't Pernita use his, uh, or her, it's how it fails before, you know? Attaching the nerves onto the arrows like he did um, this one. I guess he didn't really need to or I guess if he did that earlier then uh, Mayuri would have gotten that bit of information and used that on his Ashisogi Jizo Yeah, I guess it was best to keep that a secret until now But since you know um, Pranita destroyed his Bankai Does he need to get his Bankai fixed again? And what will happen to his Zanpak toe because you know his Bankai got destroyed Again, I will admit Pranita's uh, ability to attach the nerves onto the arrows was actually interesting and using his or its nerves to change trajectory on the arrows was actually uh, neat too. It was also cool for once seeing the tables being turned on Mayuri because it's been a while since we had something like that happen to Mayuri. And Naimu seems to be acting on her own for once, which is something that Mayuri does not approve at all. From what I can tell in the chapter, it seems that Mayuri does kind of, sort of, deep, deep, deep down care for Naimu. I guess he does have some sort of attachment to Naimu. And the whole thing about the secret finally being revealed is what? Like, Nemu being the seventh one? Uh, her full name being Nemuri Nanago? Because uh, that's not much of a secret. I mean, it's nice to know, but it's not like a major shocking revelation before. But uh, Mayuri did say that Nemu seemed to have changed ever since uh, Ichigo's group came to Soul Society. So ever since um, his fight against Uryu, during all that happened. Was that the first Nemu? And there have been other Nemus before the seventh Nemu, the current one that we've been seeing so far? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, Mayuri does not want to go through all the hassle of creating a new one. He only wants Nemu to follow his orders. He wants her to die as long as he approves of it. If he doesn't approve of it, then that will really upset him. So yeah, I guess it does kind of show that he kind of cares for Nemu in some way. Although, I will admit, this is an interesting take on Mayuri's character, since we didn't really have something like this before, but... I don't know, like... From the beginning, I never liked Mayuri because he was an awful Shinigami. I mean, he is the mad scientist in Squad 12, which, you know, that is his character and all. He uses people as test subjects. He wants to experiment on things. Not to mention he's responsible for Uryu's grandfather's death. But I don't know, as the series progressed, he did a lot of cool stuff, and there were some of his fights that I did enjoy, especially his fight with Zyle Aporo. He didn't really do anything, I guess not since Soul Society arc, that I saw that was like really, really terrible. But how I feel about Mayuri now... Well, I don't know, like... I understand that this is his character, so I never get too upset over something that he does. Well, not as much as I used to. But now, it seems that um, we're actually getting more of his character. But anyway, now that um, Pranita has escaped from Ashisogi Jizo, how is uh, Mayuri gonna defeat him now? Or it now? Especially since, you know, missing an arm. <laughs> but I get the feeling that Mayuri's gonna come up with something, otherwise he will die, which many of you guys say that he will, but again, we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. And Poor Ashisogi Jizo, like, ugh, exploded the head. It was so gross. But I feel sorry for that Zombok Toe spirit. I really do. So, um, overall, I thought this chapter was good. Some good action. 
Um, in terms of like shocking revelations or surprise secrets being revealed, eh, nothing really, but you know, some stuff that was actually nice to know, but uh, I wonder if next week's chapter is going to be the conclusion of the fight, if that's the case, is Mayori going to again pull off something to beat the left arm of the Soul King, or if uh, Pernita really will uh, kill Mayuri. I'm not exactly sure, but I am looking forward to next week's chapter. So, tell me guys, what do you think of this week's chapter of Bleach? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you really think Mayuri kind of cares for Nemu deep, deep down? I mean, he kind of was acting like a Sundare in this in a way, if you think about it. You think Mayuri's gonna pull off another trick to defeat Pernita, or is he really going to get killed? Uh, let me know in the comments below, be sure to like the video if you like it, and subscribe for more videos, and be sure to check out my Facebook fan page and Google+. Plus. So yeah, that is Bleach Chapter 640, I'm Lunar Spot 27, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.